Hey there, friends. Welcome back to some more Shadowrun Dragon Ball. When we last left off, we chased down the engineer and captured him and questioned him, and we found uh, that he was making sim... Ch not sim chips, but like BTL chips that would cause people to go insane and kill themselves and stuff, and it was bad. And then we got a gun for Jaeger, and then he died, because his chest blew up. It was gross. So now we need to head back, because the everything is, like, you know, safe now, except for we wanted to go after the people who did that, but no, Jaeger didn't want to do that, so... Let's get on with the rest of the game. And we stopped because I thought maybe there would be a slight chance we were going to have to fight our way out. But I wasn't sure. We're going to find out as soon as we exit. Nope, nope, we just head back to the Krazer Brazer Brazar. Oh well, I was wrong. The U-Bond whisks you back towards the Krazer Brazer Brazar. Jaeger standing by your side. The image of the engineer's body disintegrating in flame replays itself over and over in your mind. The bright flash, the shower of sparks, the overpowering stench of sizzling meat. A blue-green after image hangs suspended in the center of your field of vision, and it refuses to be blinked away. From what Jaeger told you, the engineer was a menace, an international criminal at the top of his game, and as you watched, he was consumed from within by a device that marked him as disposable. The rattle of your U-Bond car coming to a ha halt shakes you from your rivery. You are home. So we're back. So we're back. Come on, game. Two karma for that? Well, whatever. Okay. So there was someone who we didn't pay a visit to. That I think we should... Oh, we can't even talk to her. Why can't we talk to you? Well, fine then. I don't want to talk to you anyway. It's whatever, man. Oh, and then there's Zach. Eh, one of these days I will play a game where I actually talk to him. I just don't care to. All right, let's go. We have more people. Well, we have one more person to talk to, and then we can actually get on with the rest, the literal rest of the game. Because we will be continuing. Well, we have to go through all the DVDs. And what's in the box? Why is there a box? Whose box is that? Why is there a box? There's a note on top of the box. Celtic McFarkles, the Lodge thanks you for your dutiful service. Uh, observe the box astrally. It's a standard cardboard box with a few mundane items inside and one object that has a spirit that a spirit has been bound to. It appears safe to open. Oh, prototype combat suit. This will make a symbol will develop. Uh, what? Uh, summoning six. Uh, so to... Ooh, replace that one. But, no, 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 no. Plus one to all attributes. And rank 8 armor. Come on. Uh, but. Okay. What is my stats now? They are. So we have strength 1, quickness 4, 9, 9. Or body eight. So this will actually bring me up to. Okay, so go ahead and bop. 
<laughs> oh, that, it's like so deus exy. It's, it's great. It's, it's amazing. Confirm. Oh, we got, come here. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that. And now I want to look at our... Yep. It, well, I thought it had an armor of eight. Why does it only have an armor of three? Yeah, it has an armor of eight. Is it bugged? I don't know, but it gave us five charisma, five intelligence. Gave us more hit points. Oh, it only gave us one of these. It didn't give us another one of these. So I have to boost my spell casting back up by one. But that's which I have nine karma, so I mean I can reach the max. No, I can't, because I have to get ill willpower to nine. Poop. We'll see if that's worth it. We'll see if that's worth it. Okay, so... We have Glory to speak to, and then that is it. Glory's pallid face lights up at your approach. A genuine smile spreads across her lips. Celta McFarkles, good to see you. You too, Glory. How are, you, how are things with you? She pauses for a moment, considering. You know what? I'm happy, actually. For the first time in a long time. I have you to thank for that. Hmm. Alright, let's see if we can actually get the last bit. Be patient, so the effort that is coming. A, a, a look of unease flits across her face. I'm not sure you're going to like it, though. Uh, you needed time, and I gave you time. Are you ready to talk about f your stellar stell yet? Yeah. Glory looks troubled more than you've seen it be her before. Whatever memory she's dredging up must be exceedingly painful. I'm not gonna lie. I haven't been looking forward to this, but yeah, it's time. So the McFarkles, look. I'm gonna tell you some things about myself that might change your opinion of me. It's entirely possible that you're going to hate me based on what's coming up next. I've accepted that, and if that's what happens, I sincerely believe that I deserve it. She looks in the eye, her expression grim. So tell me, are you sure that you want to keep pushing forward with this? This is important for you, Glory. After everything that we've been through, I think that we both know that whatever you have to tell me, I'm ready to listen. Thanks, Southern McFarkles. Thanks for being a friend. Thank you for being a friend. So when we last left, when we left off last time, I had just moved from the streets of Tubigen to the warm living confines of Fuerstellar. Marta and I were happy, happy there for a while, and Harrow embraced me as a long-lost daughter. I should probably take a moment to talk more about Harrow. He's going to be an important figure in this story. I don't know what it, what his age was. He seemed old enough to be par paternal, but young enough to hang with the kids or on something like a peer level. But I guess I'd say he was in his mid-twenties. He was handsome and well-built, with neatly trimmed beard and thick brown hair. And there was something else about him, something uncanny. Harrow had this charisma, this raw, magnetic attraction that made people latch onto him. I saw it over and over. All it took was a few words and a pat on the shoulder and Harrow would have a new convert, 
Like the other kids at the farm followed him around like lost puppies. As much as I loved Marta and as much as I thought she loved me, we forgot all about one another when Hera was around. All that we wanted was to be close to him and to be part of his inner circle, and soon enough we were. For a girl of 17, it was all ter terribly exciting. Harrow had these rules of living that we would teach, that he would teach us, rules about self-determination and the importance of disobedience. He claimed to have taught classes at the University of Berlin, which he painted as a mix between an early, an earthly paradise and an anarchist playground. He told us how Fierstel would be the focal point of a new movement for the children of the fatherland. He told us that we were special. We ate it up, of course. We were kids. For those of us in the inner sanctum, Hera would share even more. He had the power likes of which I had never seen. Not my father's drunken fists for my own child experiments, but genuine incredible power. He said that it came from the horned god, an ancient deity that he venerated. <coughs> he knew about my talent, my latent abilities right away, and he offered to teach me. Naturally, I accepted. Um, I'm part of the Horn God. His followers have a poor reputation, especially among young women. Okay, but there's like a sequence of things you need to say. So, let's see. Any bad reputation that they might have had gained is well deserved. But there was more to that, to it than that, as, you, as you'll see. <sighs> Hang with me, Salt McFarkle. It's rough waters are ahead. So I became Harrow's apprentice. He taught me to channel magic and summon spirits. He taught me rituals and pagan traditions, Machiavellian philosophy, and Nietzschean ethics. Above all, he taught me to connect with his horned god, and through it I learned the power and arrogance, and it was downhill from there. For the next few years, I lived at Fierstel as Harrow's enforcer and right-hand girl. I was also his sometimes wife and concubine. But that was a distinction that I shared with a lot of the girls in the commune, including my beloved Marta. I came to learn that she had been his long she had been his long before she met me, but by that point I didn't care. I'd embraced the rules of living. I was Harrow's creature through and through. I didn't ask questions and I walked the path that was in front of me. For other fun facts about those years, I learned cruelty. I had power now, and my idol encouraged me to use it. Harrow did the same. Any children who didn't pull their weight were subjected to my tender mercies, and I was anything but tender. I took I, I took what I wanted rather than asking for it. I liked it. It was fun. I also came to learn that Harrow's horned god was not the I, I first worshipped by throwback cults across Germany. It was certainly a god with horns, but it came from an altogether different tradition. Care to hazard a guess? The Debu? In the magically active community, we refer to, refer to it as the adversary, but yeah, same being more or less. So my idol, the ancient deity that was feeding me my power, was the antithesis of everything that is right and good. And you know what? I didn't care. In our time together, Hera and I committed more atrocities than I could count. At this point, I was onto all of his tricks. I knew that first Stellar was nothing more than a honey trap carefully designed to lure local children into my master's clutches. I knew that the kids who seemed resistant to Harrow's brainwashing techniques wound up fertilizing the garden. I knew that Harrow's entire manifesto was bullshit. And I knew that through it all, Harrow and the adversary were laughing because I was laughing right there beside them. I don't want to put, pin the blame for my decisions on anyone but me. That said, I would like to po post it that posit. Wow. That's a weird word. That my father's connection with Kreza Ritters might have helped play into my willingness to serve the adversary. In my warped, indoctrinated little brain, I equated church with evil. So the opposite of that, I figured, had to be, well, if not good, then, it ha then at least not totally bad. But I was kidding myself, of course. My new deity was, my, was the very definition of bad. Serving it made me bad in the story. I can't excuse the choices you made, but I can understand why you made them. That's big of you, Salt McFarkles. I genuinely mean that. Glory takes a moment to steal herself and continues on. 
Anyway, one day, Hero invited me on a field trip to Stuttgart. Over the years that, that I was at Fürstellar, Fürstell, the commune had easily doubled in size. It was thriving, all thanks to the efforts of Marta and the girls like her. Harold would send the girls out to neighboring cities to lure the, the, street, the street kids that nobody would miss. He targeted children because they were easy to indoctrinate and because nothing makes the adversary happier than the corruption of the innocent. As we drove out to pick up the new recruits, I was already planning ahead. It was a foregone conclusion that I would pay my father a visit. The irony of a group of creserators getting emulated by a genuine servant of the actual devil tickled me to no end. So when Harrow dropped to fill up on diesel, I hopped out of the van and headed out on foot to my parents' place. Harrow wasn't overly concerned about my absence. I had long since reached the point where I could assert my autonomy, and he knew that I'd be back. I wound up at my folks' house sometime around noon, and I could hear the adversary whispering in my ear, telling me to, what to do. I had long since learned to listen to its voice. It's always rewarded me with extra power when I did its bidding. It told me to knock, so I did. As I opened the door, I could feel a torrent of flames welling up at the astral plane all around me. It told me to channel them into the doorway and into my father, so I did. But of course, the person who opened the door wasn't my father. It was my mother. As I watched her flesh blacken and melt, as I heard her scream and I broke into hysterics, I heard the adversary laugh. At that moment, I realized it was laughing at me. And I'm sorry. Glory nods, a grim expression on her delicate face. Thanks. We're almost at the end now. Thanks for sticking with me. It was like a lever had been pulled, and all at once the bubble popped. But I was a powerful servant. I was a powerful servant of the adversary. I was I was not Harrow's number one girl. I was I was a ridiculous little fool who had willingly tied her soul to the worst thing in existence. Real realizing all of this what was one thing, actually fixing it was something else entirely. I knew I had to get away from Harrow, that was the first thing to do, so I bit my lip and did my best to ignore the happy babble of the new recruits on the trip back to Furstel, and I managed to get through the ride without screaming. Once we were back at the commune, I broke into Harrow's safe, stole all of the commune's resources, and ran. I don't know when Harrow realized what I had done, or whether he even cared. All I know is that, that nobody came after me, so I kept running and running until I got to Berlin. Getting past the wall was fairly simple. You know how easy it is to obtain falsified papers. The biggest obstacle that fa I faced during my flight was the adversary itself. I could run from Haro, but how do you run for something that's tied to your own soul? I have a feeling that I know. The haunted look in Glory's eyes is heartbreaking. She gives you another curt, grim nod. I walked into the office of the first street dock I could find, pointed at the, all the biggest, bulkiest pieces of cyberware that he had on display, and told him to put them into me. He tried to upsell me on the better merchandise, arguing that, all I, that what I was asking for was old and inefficient, better suited to be installed in a museum than a body. He told me that I'd be shredding my essence, that once it was gone, I'd never be able to get it back. I stuck, to, I stuck to my guns. After all, shredding my essence was what was the whole point. Glory looks up at you. Her sunken eyes are hollow, and the aura of loss about her is palpable. She looks like a woman who's been through hell. That's all for now, Sultan McFarkles. You've heard the tale. The tale. You know why I'm the way I am. You know the things I've done. How much I have to atone for. If you still want my company, fine. If I've lost your friendship, I understand that too. But for now, I need to be alone. So, we've talked to Glory. Now, does she still want to be alone? Oh, I guess not. I guess we're going to finish this. <clears throat> Glory favors you with a weak smile. Her expression is cautious. You're suddenly aware of how very small she is. Holy self, Big Farkles, i got to admit, I've been dreading this. Oh, I don't think I can save during... Because I know you can say the wrong thing. Oh, well. If I say the wrong thing, I'll fix it. So, now that you you know what I've done, what I am, are you here to tell me off? I wouldn't blame you if you were. Hmm. <clears throat> no, Glory, I'm not here to tell you off. Truth be told, I wanted to check and see how you were doing. 
how you were doing. Not great, struggling, about how do you expect. Okay, let's see, I have a question for you. Yeah, what's that? If you escape from Harrow, but he's still out there, if you're looking for to atone for your past, why don't you think, don't you think that shutting him down would be a pl place to start? Or you gotta have the first arrow, but Harrow's cult is still up and running, right? Still full of kids who are being brainwashed and worse. So sh shouldn't we do something about that? Oh, I don't know if she's looking for atonement. Let's find out if that's the right one. She holds her silence for a long time. Finally, she nods. Yes. I've been thinking about this for a long time, Selton McFlarkles, and every time I've gotten close to making a decision, I've turned and run away again. No more running. I'm ready to do this thing, but I can't do it alone. I'm going to need your help. That's the idea. Alright, if we're going to do this, we need to be clear about what our goal is. There are a lot of innocent people in that place. Lost street kids who got sucked in by Marta and the other girls like her. Saving them won't be easy, but it feels like the right thing to do. But then, there's also Harrow to consider. I want that man dead. Lord knows he deserves it. And if we're willing to, and if we don't make killing him our top priority, he might get away from us. If that happens, if he runs, he'll eventually start up another cult somewhere else, where we can't find him, and all of this will have been for nothing. We're likely to run into other complications as well, so I think need think that we need to make a decision here up front. What would you do in my place? Rescue the kids or take down Harrow? I don't think we can imagine manage both. Uh. I mean, both of these points are true. Freeing the kids. But then again, if we kill him... If we kill him... We can just not kill any of the people. I mean, we can still save the people after we kill him. So... I actually think we should take down Harrow. We'll save any cultists that we can, but the ones that are too far gone... We'll have to be put down. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that we have to put them down, but I think killing him is actually a good place to start. So... Yeah, pretty tough choice here. I would say... I think we need to take him out. Harrow needs to die. I don't want any other kids hurt or killed, but Harrow, that bastard has to pay for what he did to me. She stops as if suddenly unsure of herself. A moment later, a newfound confidence seems to seize her. She looks to you and there's a fire in her eyes. He has to pay for what he did to all of us. I won't let this happen again. He needs to die. Hmm. Alright, okay, uh, second thought, let me reconsider. Let's see... I don't think you'll get away. Let's see what happens when we say freeing the kids. I hate giving Harrow the chance to escape, but you're right. Saving the kids is what's important. This feels like the path to redemption. This feels right. Okay, so glad to hear that we're in agreement and we're ready to go. Okay, so we're going to save the kids first because that seems like the best way to go. Oh, and thanks to the McFarkles for everything. So we're going to go help Glory now. I have actually did this mission up to a point. There was a point where it was kind of bugged. And there's someone you talk to where you have to make certain choices. And it was bugged to a point where you couldn't make all the right choices at a time. And... I'm gonna... Hopefully they, they... It's been a while since I've done that. So hopefully there's enough patches that have went through that's fixed. Board the train. Uh, was I supposed to talk to her again? Oops. Uh, hello? Glory? Hello? You, you ready to go? Uh, did you, did you get your things? Uh, do I 
but do I do it after the next run? Take the van to Harrow's compound. Oh no, I don't, where, what is going on? Stop, no, okay, that, that one. Oh, I do it from down here. Oh. That's weird. So we gotta go to the van. And we're gonna go help Glory. Um, let's see, she's at that, 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 that. Uh, it actually seems pretty good. And we got me with my spellsies, my spellers. That seems like it'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. The drive from the Kreser Brazer Brazar to the Sean Butch Forest is a long one. Over six hours. You and Glory rode in relative silence, only with the sounds of the road for company. Now you find yourself crouching in the woods, watching, waiting. Off in the distance, the rustic exterior of Fruchtel looks curiously warm and inviting, but you know what's waiting inside. The anticipation churns at your guts like a living thing. Eventually, a van pulls out of the compound's driveway and rolls out along the surface road before disappearing from view. Glory gives you a nod and begins to scramble forward. Harrow has left the building. It's time for you to make your way inside. Alright, it's time for us to lay down some damage. Kick some ass. Alright. So, let's see. We got Glory here, and... I don't understand why she's got, like, the thing tied around her waist. And why she wears parachute pants. Maybe it's a hammer thing. I don't know. But I think we're good to go. I think we're good to go. Uh, no, nah, I don't want to spend any karma yet. The weathered edifice of the fierce stell looms above you, dark and sinister in the chill of the night air. Despite the horrifying stories that Glory told you about this place, something about it feels strangely comforting. In the back of your mind, insidious voices whisper that you could stay here forever. Do you feel it? The lure of this place? Glory gestures with a limb of chrome and steel. When I was a kid, when I was whole, the pull was irresistible. Yeah, I can feel it, but that doesn't change what we have to do. Yeah, it was almost pleasant. It's meant to be. That's how it gets you to you. It worms its way inside you, changes you, and you don't even realize what's happening until it's too late. She looks at you with her eyes. Uh, her eyes are dark, and when she speaks again, her voice is quiet but steady. You're going to see some terrible things here, Selden Farkles. First, Stell exists to prey upon the to prey on the young, and we're going to have to come face to face with that. Are you sure that you're prepared for this? I'm ready as I'm gonna be. She studies your face for a moment longer, then locks and looks away. Good. Want to compare notes? Make sure that we're both on the same page. We save the street kids and runaways that are living in here. We take them away from this place before Harrow can turn them into monsters. We keep them from following in my footsteps. Uh, any suggestions on how we should do this? Actually, this is your run, Glory. I'm just here to help you. What should we do first? Harrow keeps a shrine in the compound. It's the key to his control over the cultists. We're, for, we're going to purify the shrine and break that control, then we're going to lead those kids out of here. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about the shrine. It's just a lump of... It's a lump of rock about as tall as I am, inscribed with runes and crusted bone. Its power comes from an entity that harrows bound to the stone, something very old, very dangerous, a toxic spirit. In many ways, it's the heart of this place. The voices that you can hear whispering in the back of your mind, those are the spirit's voices. It saps the will of anyone who sets foot on these grounds. We can't save those kids until the shrine is dealt with. They'll fight us if we try. Hash out a few more details. Uh, why, does, why not just kill it? The shrine controls the people here. Hmm. Alright, how do we purify it? Something like that. It'll be easier to just show you. I've got everything we need right here. 
She pats the satchel that hangs from her shoulder. When the time comes, I'll conduct the ritual, but before I can do that, we're going to have to face the spirit on its own terms, and that's going to be dangerous, Sultan McFarkles. Alright, let's get going. Alright, we're going to go into the shrine and take, and take out the spirit once and for all next time, friends, on Shadowrun Dragonfall. Till then, you all take care, and of course, have a good one.